Hi, CS430. So, so far, what we, we've seen, just a quick recap here, we've seen how a predictable, uh, predictable stack layout allows us to turn uh, variable references into uh, turn variable references into pointer plus offset computations computations uh, for statically scoped statically scoped languages and this is very useful right because a very well thought out stack allowed us to forget ver things like variable names. We didn't have to go looking for a variable. All we had to do was offset into the stack frame and find the variable we, or and access the variable we wanted at the offset that we knew it was going to be at. So now we're going to look at how to implement inheritance for object-oriented languages. And we want the same sort of thing. We want to um, be able to know exactly where the code of a method is and exactly where the um, fields of some particular object are. Okay, so I've put the code over to the right here and let's um, think about first field access. So I'm gonna create a shape s1 equals a new base shape and a circle except let's not in fact let's just call it a shape s2 equals a new um, circle and let's say we, we're going to pass this to some function that um, looks like this. Void. Uh, I'm going to do kind of like my print shape there. Um, print shape this is my uh, quick and dirty version of that function. Shape S. And this isn't going to call any methods. This one is going to print S dot. Uh, draw scale because every shape has a draw scale field okay and then I'm gonna call this is like sitting up in main somewhere I'm gonna call print shape s1 print shape s2 okay so let's think about what happens in the stack in the heap this is gonna look a lot like your used to seeing from 149, but we're gonna basically complicate the heap picture today and the code section to really understand how this works. So, okay, so I'm sitting somewhere in the stack and I call uh, on this line, I call print shape. So I'm gonna push a print shape. Let me remove this over a little bit. Print shape record. And now you know, you know, we've got all our, um, dynamic uh, link and our static link and our return address those sorts of things are getting pushed down there that's fine uh, and then I'm gonna eventually put the um, parameter right so sitting in the stack I'm gonna get the parameter s and what type is s well s is a shape here let's do like Java where it's always a reference type for um, complicated objects. So S is a reference to a shape. So I would normally draw that like 149 mode as drawing a pointer over to a shape object. And then the way that you've been taught to do this is to say, okay, shape S1 here is a new shape. That's what I'm passing. I'm passing S1 in. So what does a shape look like? Well, I just need to draw all of its fields. So in 149, you would have said, okay, this thing has a draw scale field that's 1.0. And really, this is kind of a bad way to draw it because there's like this big box around another box. Really, it's just the memory, right? That's what hopefully one of the takeaways you've been having. And so really, shape has a single double in it that has 1.0. And it's just, we like to 
put on the side that this is the draw scale, right? But at the end of the day, what we want to do, just like we were doing two weeks ago, is change everything to offset. So uh, what I'm going to do is say um, right here, how do I access the draw scale field? Well, it is, uh, first of all, you know how to get to the S variable. We have to offset from the current EP, right? So the EP and the SP are now pointing to my print shape frame in the stack, and there's some more stack down below, whatever. But you know how to offset in to get variable S, so I'm not going to do that again. I'm just going to say, okay, follow S, which is really EP plus however many offsets I need to get to the S variable. Follow S, and S is going to get me to my heat record, and then I'm going to offset into the heat record just like I was offsetting into stacks, because at the end of the day, I don't want to ever refer to a name that's slow. I want to use pointers and offsets only to compile everything. So follow S to heap instance, offset zero into the instance. Okay, and that would print out draw scale. Okay, so now let's uh, assume we pop the stack here. And so that's uh, somewhere down below, of course, I've got a, this, this code. Let's say this is in main. So down in main's record, you know, I've got S1 that's pointing to that thing. But I've also got an S2 that I made, and it's pointing to a circle. So let's draw the circle and let's be a little sloppy here. Let's say, oh, I'm a 149 student. I need to, or a 159 student maybe. I need to draw the circle class. Yeah, I got to do 159 to do inheritance. Well, a circle has a radius and it inherits shape and inherits a draw scale. So let's just throw those both in ad hoc. Okay. Radius is going to be, and maybe we'll make the, uh, make it normally do two. Okay. Radius is going to be uh, first one and um, draw scale will be the second one. So on top of this thing is my dot radius. On the bottom is my dot draw scale. Okay, so now let's uh, run the print shape code that we compiled and see that we just messed everything up. Okay, so we call print shape. We're gonna push a record. Yes, there's a bunch of stuff that you've now learned about return address and things like that. But at the top of this thing is my local variable S. It's going to refer to S2, which I'm passing it. And now let's try running this code. It says follow S to the heap instance, offset zero into the instance. S to the heap instance, offset zero gives me the radius, right? So this is a dumb way to compile because if I do this, now this dynamic information is S either a vanilla shape, which means that offset zero is a draw scale, or is S a circle, which means that I need to offset one to the draw scale, right? Now that dynamic information would have to somehow be, be tested here, and that's gonna be slow. So that's a bad idea, but hopefully this shows you why we do it the way we actually do it. And the way we actually do it is when you lay out an instance of a circle, the first set of offsets are exactly what it inherits from its parents. So I'm inheriting a double draw scale from my parent shape. That's going into index zero on any vanilla shape. So that also needs to be index zero in a circle. I don't want to do something screwball like this. So let's erase these. Let's erase these. The rule is when I lay out a subclass, in the heap, the top offsets will look exactly like wh whoever I'm extending. So because circle extends shape and shape has a draw scale at index zero, I will also put my draw scale at index zero. And then and only then do I get to lay out any additional fields that I've added to this class. So I have my additional radius class that a circle has, and I'm going to put it past all the indices necessary to lay out a shape. So 
it's going when I created S2, it was going to put 1.0 in for the draw scale, 2.0 for the radius. And now everything works the way I want it to work because when I call print shape and I pass it a circle, the print shape function doesn't need to know that it has a circle. It only needs to know that it has a shape. And the point is I'm structuring my code so that S dot draw scale is accessed the same regardless of whether I've got a base at shape or some more specific class like the circle class. So let's try it. Follow S to the heap instance, offset zero into the heap instance. Follow S to the heap instance, offset zero into the heap instance. That is indeed now the draw scale field. Okay, so rule one for dealing with inheritance is the uh, first offsets into uh, my, let's call it, the instance record of a base class. I'm sorry, of a um, class need to match the fields of the parent class. So another way to say that is, I mean, another way to think about that, circle extends shape. So whatever goes in a shape instance record uh, fields, in the same order, go in a circle instance record in the same order from top to bottom before I get to anything new for circle. And that's how I'm able to compile the dynamic dispatch here. So this, by the way, is called dynamic dispatch. Oh, I'm sorry, this isn't quite dynamic. We'll get there. This is my dynamic field access, right? I'm able to access the proper draw scale field even though you know the the records don't look the same a shape record does not look exactly like a circle record a circle record has a radius but if i take the top of the shape uh, the circle record it looks exactly like the top of i mean it it's parent um class, the shape class. That is the punchline here, right? So that's the thing that you need to make sure you, you understand. Okay, now we're going to complicate things a little more. So notice what I've changed here. I have, I've cleaned everything up down here. I've now changed the print shape to take in a shape S and print the area. Okay, so we're going to need to draw a little more complicated picture. I'm going to move this way down and I'm going to also draw the code section because remember my code and my data, my stack, my heap, everything is really just being laid out in memory in one big array that we call memory. And the compiler is emitting code that manages this big data structure. And so um, for every method that I've got over here in my code, I need a compiled version. So shapes name will get compiled somewhere. Shapes area, shapes draw scale, circles name, circles radius, circles uh, circles area, those are gonna get compiled. Print shape's gonna get compiled. Main's gonna get compiled. And all of that is gonna go in the code section of my memory. So let's uh, put a few of these in here. So I don't know what the assembly language it's going to be, I'm going to just use a, a shorthand here and say, all right, this is shapes. Um, and I'll use it too. Let's do uh, name area and draw scale, right? So shape has a name area uh, or a name code that got compiled and it gets stuck in memory somewhere. So let's say that's at like OX010. And then... Um, Maybe that was 90 lines of code. So shapes area code gets stuck at OX100. And shapes draw, um, what was it? Uh, draw scale 
gets compiled and that's at maybe uh, that shapes areas only um, 50 lines of code. I mean, these are, I'm just making stuff up, right, to show you. This is all sitting in, in memory. Um, and then, uh, so I've compiled shape down. I need to compile circle down, name, radius, and area. So that's going to be, boom, um, circles. Going to have its version of name, which when I run a name on a circle, I want to run this one. So let's say it's at OX200. Um, circle's going to have its own area. Uh, so maybe that's at OX300. And circle's going to have um, its uh, radius function radius function that gets compiled main gets compiled somewhere so this is main's code um, then down here we're going to have we need print shape so print shapes code so all of these the compiled code goes in memory somewhere right so look back up here at my little print shape function i've changed it to print s dot area I could say, hey, this is a shape, right? Shapes area function is stored at OX100. So why don't we emit code that says uh, when I call the function, when I want to call area, it really gets compiled to uh, transfer control to line OX100, right? We're going to point the program counter at OX100. That's going to run the area function for me, right? And so that works perfectly fine when I pass it S1 because S1 is a shape. OX100 is the compiled code for shapes area method. So when I call print shape and I pass it S1, that works perfectly, calls the area function. So what's the problem? The problem is that S2 is not a vanilla shape, it's a circle. And so in, in object-oriented programming, the whole point is that I want to be able to write functions like this that specialize their call to the type of this object. And so if I pass a circle in for this shape, I don't want to call the vanilla area function. I want to call circles area function. But right now, what happens is if I print shape S2, S2 comes in here, I'm going to say as S, right? And I'm going to call the area function. I'm going to transfer control over to line OX100. And when I transfer control over to OX100, I'm not calling circles area function I'm calling shapes area function. So this is a problem. And the problem is that the, the actual type of S is not static information. It is dynamic information. So somehow, and what does dynamic always mean? It always means I need some pointers in here to tell me how to get around. Because somehow, when I call area on an S, I need to know, do I have a shape or do I have a circle? And where is the proper area function? And I would also not like to go searching, right? I don't want to have to write a loop or something to loop over or, you know, say, oh, what, what's your type? Store a string with your type and then use that to look up. I want everything to turn into pointer arithmetic. Okay. So we're going to complicate things in two ways. Uh, well, we're going to complicate the instance record in the heap with one new pointer called a vtable pointer. So that's the first thing we're going to do. The second thing we're going to do is point it at a vtable. So we're going to introduce vtables, which are called virtual tables and they are lookups to where the code for that uh, object is. So on the, let's do step one first. Step one's easy. Now every instance on the heap, the zeroth entry is not going to be your first, um, not going to be whatever your first uh, 
field is. So I'm not going to put draw scale at the top. Actually, that's going to come in at entry number index one. Draw scale is going to be index one for both a shape and a circle. We're still going to keep the rule that a circle instance needs to look exactly like a shape, but uh, the fields aren't the first thing. The first thing is the V table pointer. So we're going to store a pointer to this thing that we haven't talked about yet called a V table. Same with here. We're going to store a pointer at the top of this instance. Now I need it to point to something. And that's going to get stored down in the code section, uh, essentially, so, or the static memory layout. So now I need V tables. And the rule is you get a V table for every class. So every compiled class gets a V table. Now we'll look, if we allow multiple inheritance, you might need more than one V table. But uh, for now, every compiled class gets one V table. So I'm going to have a single V table for the shape class. And I'm going to have a single V table for circle. Now, if it were an abstract class, it wouldn't be a compiled class. So I wouldn't actually need, if I, if I made shape an abstract class, I wouldn't actually need a V table for shape. But for now, let's just do, nothing's abstract. Okay. And the purpose of the V table is to store pointers to the proper method, uh, compiled methods for that class. So a shape has three methods, a name, an area, a draw scale. And so it's V table needs a name pointer, a area pointer, and a draw scale pointer. And these point to the actual compiled code for those methods. So we're adding one level of indirection, or we're adding, a, yeah, two levels really of indirection here, but we'll see why this is so important in a minute. So let me do these in um, green so they distinguish them a little bit. So uh, shapes name implementation is here. Areas name implementation is here. And uh, I mean, sorry, shapes area implementation and uh, shapes draw scale implementation is here. And so those point to that. And now when I initialize an object, part of what new does with it, the constructor is actually points the V table to whatever this type is, not the type on the left. The, that's just the reference. That's information for this side of the picture. It's the, the actual object I'm constructing. What's its type. And so S1 is a shape, a base shape. And so its V table pointer is going to point to the base shape V table pointer. Thank you, constructor. So constructor's job now gets a little more uh, difficult. When, it, when we construct an object, point the V table pointer in the heap instance to the uh, actual classes V table, to the V table for the type of object being constructed. Okay, so that's very important. So, so look at when we uh, initialize a new circle object and we're setting up the heap, then it doesn't, again, pay no attention to where I'm assigning it. This is being done before the assignment happens, right? New circle. How do I construct a new circle? Well, a circle needs a V table and it needs to point to the circle. Maybe I'll do circles in red here to just kind of differentiate. Very Christmassy. Needs to point to the V table for a circle. We'll look at how the V table for a circle is laid out in a minute. That's where the V table pointer points for a circle. 
Then uh, what, what's the rest of the constructor going to do? Um, the con calling that constructor is going to then lay out the rest of this. So it'll first lay out anything in my parent class, any fields in my parent class, followed by any fields in my actual class. So that, again, if I look at the top of the circle, it looks exactly like a shape. So now my code doesn't need to know whether, if I want to have code that deals with shapes appropriately, it doesn't need to know whether you gave me a shape or a circle. The thing that it's pointing to always looks like a shape to it, right? And so offsetting into this, uh, to get to draw scale, I offset by one. To get to the V table, I offset by zero. All right, so those are very predictable layout. Okay. So good. So now, uh, now we've got this picture. But let's look at, at the whole point. Remember, is when I call area and transfer control, I don't want to hard code to line OX100. I want to use some pointers and in indirection here to get me to that line of code when you give me a shape. But when you give me a circle, I want to get to a different line of code. Specifically, I'm going to want to get to um, OX300, which is where circles area is stored, right? So let's look at what we do now. What we do is we use this indirection. S1 points to a V table pointer. The V table pointer points to the V table for the type I am. Offset by one into there gets me to the area pointer. And then follow the area pointer gets me down to shapes area code at OX100, right? So let's change this compiled code here to the following. It's, uh, okay, follow S to the heap instance. Step one, two, follow the V table pointer to the V table. Okay, let me move these uh, down a little bit. Okay, step three. So now what have I done? I've gone S1 to the V table pointer, S2 to the V table. Remember, I want everything to be offsets and pointer axes. So I'm here at the top and oh yeah, and I'm growing downwards. Um, unlike I did with the stack, I should probably grow upwards, but as long as it's consistent, right? So this is the zeroth entry. This is the offset one entry, and that's what I'm trying to compile, right? Uh, I'm trying to get to the area function. So I'm gonna offset into the V table by one. Offset into V table by one. That now gets me to this slot, and now I'm going to follow that memory address, follow that function pointer down to the actual code of the function. So step four is follow, transfer control really. Transfer control to function pointed to at offset one. All right. Okay. So just to convince ourselves that this works, because this is much more complicated, right? This is more complicated than just saying go to OX100. That's static information. This is definitely dynamic uh, because I have S1. I follow it to the V table, step one. Step two, come down to the V table. Step three, offset by one into the V's table. Step four, follow that offset and now start running this code. And that's going to find the shape area. Okay. And here's the punchline. The punchline is if the area method also is index one in a circle object, then the same code will work if I pass a circle. So, so the, just like I had to make the top of my heap instance look exactly, uh, for a circle, look exactly like the base class, I need to make the top of my V table for a circle look exactly like the parent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, circles inherit their parents' methods. So they need a name, pointer. They need an area, 
pointer and they need a draw scale pointer. So now the, um, the top of a circle V table, index zero is name, just like a shape. Index one is area, just like a shape. Index two is draw scale, just like a shape. So indexing, if I follow a circle uh, V table pointer down here, but I'm expecting a shape, I'm happy because it looks just like a shape to me. I don't need to know that there's actually some more stuff down below. And that's the difference is that then after I've laid out pointers for all of the um, methods that I'm inheriting, then I look in my class and say, is there any new methods? And there's one, there's the radius method. And so I'm also going to put a pointer to the radius method, right? And the, the big catch is, so these are point, oops, um, doo -doo -doo. these are pointers, but they're not going to point to the same things that these point to, because the whole point of this, the whole idea here is that I need name for a circle. I need to be able to get to circles name, not shapes name when I pass you a circle. So this is where the second level of indirection is so useful. So this is going to point down to circles names code. Area is going to point now to circles area code. Draw scale, now this is interesting. Notice that I did not supply in my circle class, I did not override draw scale. I just want to inherit my parrot's draw scale. What does that mean? That means I need this compiled code. I don't need a new one. And so what I'm going to do with a circle draw scale pointer is point it to the base draw scale, right? So it's just pointing to the code I've already compiled for shape draw scale. And then finally, I need my radius pointer. I'm getting a whole mess of these things, right? To the radius code. And now let's look at what happens when I pass S2. So let's call, um, look at the full call to print shape on S2. I would set up the stack with a print shape record. And as you know now, there'd be the dynamic link and the static link and the return address and all that down here. But then at the very top, I'd get an S for, uh, for my parameter. And I'm passing it S2, right? So I'm going to pass the value of that reference, which is going to point to the same heap instance record. And now let's look at calling the area method. So remember, when I passed it S1, uh, area was at OX100. When I pass it S2, the area function I want to call is at OX300. And that's why I can't hard code this with either OX100 or OX300, because one of those is going to be wrong for the other call, right? But the, the idea is if I've laid out everything correctly, this code here should work regardless. We already know it works for S1, so let's see if it works for S2. So the first thing is I'm going to follow S to the heap instance. Here's S, follow it to the heap instance. Then I'm going to follow the V table pointer to the V table. Here's the V table pointer. Jump down, follow it to the V table, and it pointed to a different V table because my types are different, right? Okay, now I'm going to offset into the V table by one. That's here, and I'm going to follow that pointer. And look where we got we got to OX300, circles area code, right? So this is the implementation of what is called dynamic dispatch. I'm dispatching to the proper method based on the actual type in a way that my code doesn't actually need to know what the type is because it's just following pointers. This is the entire point purpose of having this uh, extra level of indirection with V tables is now my code doesn't need to know if you gave me a shape or a circle. It always will know how to get to any of the um, shape methods by proper offsets, right? And then if I have a circle and I want to get to the radius method, well, that first of all, the type of the reference would need to be a circle to be able to compile it, not a shape, right? I can't call s.radius here 
because S, the only thing I'm remembering about S is that it's a shape. And so this code doesn't know that it might be a circle. But if I pass, if I change this to a circle and wanted to call it um, circle dot rate or S dot radius, that code would also be an offset. It'd just be follow. Now I would know that I'm getting a circle type. And so I'm going to offset by 0, 1, 2, 3 to get to the radius pointer. No big deal.